Little over a year ago, I made a top 10 Pokemon games list. In that list, I talked about which main series game I liked the best. But today, I'm going to talk about which 5 spin-off games I liked the most. Just to make this list a bit more interesting, I'll go by spin-off series, otherwise we'd all know what this list looks like. Anyway, let's get started. Pokemon Rumble. I must admit, I've only played the original Pokemon Rumble on the Wii, but I've seen people play Pokemon Rumble Blast and it looks like a lot of fun. I plan on picking it up somewhere as soon as I can find a cheap copy somewhere. For the people who somehow don't know what Pokemon Rumble is about, let me explain. You're a Pokemon toy. Yeah, you heard that correctly, a toy. And you want to become the Pokemon Toy Battle Champion, or at least, I guess you do. This game is not really clear on that, although I believe Pokemon Rumble Blast has somewhat of a story. Anyway, so in order to become strong you have to level up, right? Wrong. You collect other stronger Pokemon. So this means that you just throw away the toys you get early game for money. Yeah, Ash, where's your power of friendship now? All about the numbers, mate. Anyway, that is Pokemon Rumble. It's fun. I'd say give it a try. Pokemon Ranger. I must clarify that I mean Shadows of Olmia with this. The original Pokemon Ranger is pretty bad. Alright, so the reason I like this game series so much is because, well, for one, it's really not an existing genre. Any other Pokemon spin-off is based on some other game, or at least can be put in a certain genre. Pokemon Ranger? No. This game is just too cool for that. Secondly, this game, a uh, genre thingy, only works on an Nintendo DS, since capturing Pokemon with a controller like this would be goddamn near impossible. That being said though, these games are little more than a gimmick for the Nintendo DS. The gameplay is interesting and in Shadow of Army is actually quite a bit of fun, but just decent gameplay doesn't cut it, it doesn't have a story to carry the game forwards. And drawing circles on your touch screen isn't interesting enough to keep you going either. They really tried, but in the end it's just short of hitting that sweet spot that could have launched it all the way up, maybe even to the top of this list. Pokemon Snap. I know, right? How dare I not put this on the number one spot? To be fair, most lists I see rank this game pretty high, and I sure think it's way better than the other two entries on this list, but I also think that most lists I've seen from people who played this game as a kid have some nostalgic value towards the game. Don't get me wrong, I'm not using nostalgia as a bad thing to point out how horrible this game is, as a matter of fact I just mentioned I think it's pretty good. Anyway, the premise of this game is you take photos. Of Pokemon. Yeah, that's it. Sounds boring? Well, it's not. It's surprisingly fun to take good photos of all the Pokemon and make them do tricks and get even better scores from Professor Oak. And just like everybody else who made a list like this, I'm going to say it. Nintendo? You like money, right? Well, yeah, you've got two systems which would work perfectly with Pokemon Snap. Make Pokemon Snap 2. Pokemon Conquest. I felt without playing this game, I couldn't make a list like this. So, just for this list, I played the game. And holy shit, is it amazing! Who would have guessed that a game I never played before would end up so high on this list? For some reason, I expected this game to have a good story, being a tactical RPG and all. Sadly, that was somewhat disappointing, but as far as gameplay goes, I love this. As I said before, this is a tactical RPG, but seeing as how it is mixed with Pokemon, you have easier time than other games in the genre. One important thing being, there's no permanent death. The battles feel epic and every single kingdom has a unique thing to it that keeps the battles interesting. And oh damn, the music in this game is amazing. There's really no reason you shouldn't play this game. Go get it. Now.
Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. We all saw this one coming, didn't we? Alright, let's point one thing out. I have not played Gates to Infinity yet, and I've heard people aren't pleased with it, but honestly, I don't care. I still plan on getting it whenever I can. Hear me out. One day, you wake up as a Pokemon. What do you do? Exactly, you trust the first stranger you meet and form a rescue team to help all the Pokemon in need. Describing these games can be difficult, because it'll end up sounding like every RPG player's worst nightmare, just going through dungeons over and over again. Well, to some extent, that can be true, and the game knows when to take it a little easy and give you a little bit of story time when you're about to get sick and tired of all those dungeons. Talking about story time, these games have the best story in any Pokemon game ever, even Black and White being the best story in the main series don't even come close to this. I am not one to cry for fictional characters, but both Pokemon Mystery Dungeon's Blue Rescue Team and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorer the Sky had me wipe away its tears the first time I played them. Even now, after playing both of them multiple times, I still feel for the characters in the climax of the story. Of course, I'm not going to spoil what happens, but there's only one other game that really ever made me feel for a fictional character so much that I'm almost crying. That's been my top 5 Pokemon spin-off games. If you've enjoyed this list, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Also let me know what your favourite Pokemon spin-off is, and in the comments below you can also tell me what other top 5 I should make next. Until the next time, Ivan Vlogger, you have been awesome as always. Bye.